I would say I'm kind of like a practitioner of all. I think there's a little bit of truth in everything. Yeah, that's kind of on the same boat. I think there's valuable pieces of uh, wisdom inside of the scriptures that we can extract without necessarily having to convert. And I know, I obviously, I know that some people think that, you know, it's the only way you have to do that. So, you know, everyone's entitled to that belief system. Yeah, I'm pro right. everyone getting a say. Welcome, modern day mystics, fellow true seekers, James and Justin here with another reaction video. And in this one, we are going to look at Islam explained by Kagato. And someone suggested we kind of like do a video like this. And I think it's good because we did a few Muslim reaction videos and maybe we jumped in, you know, in over our head too soon on some of those reactions. Some people liked them, some people didn't like them. There was like one week where I was like, yeah, the Muslims are praying for me or something. I was like, you know, should I bow to Allah? Uh, no! I could like well, feel it. Well, we don't want to be disrespectful too, though. But That's not disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I might be clinically insane. You know what I mean? But... We're just trying to unpack this as usual. We've said it a million times. Yeah. We're, we're, we're not trying to be disrespectful. We're trying to be authentic, trying to be honest, trying to, um, in real time, show the thought processes that can happen when regarding some of these things. Um, so we're it gonna, is what it yeah. is. So yeah. we're going to look at, like, the, this is a good, like, beginners. Here are the basics of Islam. Yeah. So we can kind of learn it from the beginning uh, to the end, and this should be a good video. So... Let's get into this reaction. It's a little bit of a lengthy one. Islam. Everyone's talking about it. With a global community stretching from China to Timbuktu to California and everywhere in between, this religion is the way of life of a quarter of humanity. But what is Islam? What do Muslims believe? And what is Shakira's law? Well, let's find out. Come on. <laughs> With about 1.8 billion followers, or 24% of Earth's population, Islam is the second largest religion on the planet, and therefore the universe. Muslims make up the majority of the population in 49 countries, as diverse as Yemen, Nigeria, Albania, Kazakhstan, and Malaysia. This 1,400-year-old religion started in modern-day Saudi Arabia, but today only 20% of Muslims are Arabs. Indonesia is actually the country with the most Muslims, holding around 13% of the world's total. About 30% of Muslims live in India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. Christianity is named after Christ, Judaism after the tribe of Judea, and Zoroastrianism after the 1998 swashbuckling adventure film The Mask of Zorro, starring Antonio Banderas. But Islam uh -huh. is named after an action. Islam means submission to God, and Muslim is the person that submits to God. The root meaning of the word Islam means peace, safety, and security. The Arabic word for peace, salam, comes from this root along with the Hebrew word shalom. So submission to God means finding peace by following God. Around the world, regardless of language, most Muslims greet each other in Arabic saying, Assamalu alaikum, peace be upon you. Islam originated in 7th century Arabia with a guy called Muhammad. Before we can get into Muhammad's life, we need to talk about the elephant in the room. His name is Sebastian, and he is standing in front of my whiteboard explaining the controversy surrounding drawing Muhammad. Sebastian, can you, can you just scoot over there? Can you just please move? Okay. Drawing Muhammad is a controversial and emotional political issue. Firstly, the Quran, Islam's holy book, has no ban on drawing Muhammad. But the big three Abrahamic faiths, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, all have rules against making images of any living thing. This comes from the Torah and some Muslims and Jews. That's strange though, because uh, in Christ like Christiani Christianity and Judaism, they still make drawings like of God or Jesus. Oh, there's not just drawings of Jesus. There's sculptures and yeah, and statues, paintings, everything, and everything. There's markets full of Jesus <laughs> paraphernalia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but so. they don't. They are. That's no no bueno with this. Yeah, I guess so. I think we like in those Abrahamic religions. I think the idea is that you know you can have the drawings, you can have the statues as long as you're not worshiping them. 
So that as long as you're not, you haven't turned them into an idol. Mm-hmm. And I guess maybe the, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but maybe the Islamic idea is that don't even give yourself the temptation. So just cut it out. But anyway, keep going. Let's take this rule fairly seriously. Islam kept this rule going so that Muslims wouldn't worship in front of images of Muhammad or God. Instead, they pray directly to God. Some Muslim societies have drawn Muhammad in the past, Iranian cultures especially. Today, most Muslims aren't offended by disrespectful images of Muhammad, but respectful images are usually fine, especially in Shia Islam, the second largest branch of Islam. And the majority of Muslims disagree with violence in response to depictions of Muhammad. To be respectful, as we always try to be, this silhouette will stand in place of Muhammad. No, not that. That's Sebastian again. Please, Sebastian, move. You're making me look like a fool. <laughs> this is the silhouette. Face. Sorry. Muhammad was born in 570 CE in Mecca in Arabia. His parents died when he was very young, and Muhammad grew up as an orphan. Back then, the Arabs worshipped hundreds of different gods, and Muhammad's tribe, the Quraysh, were the guardians of this building the Kaaba in Mecca. They packed the Kaaba with hundreds of idols to different gods, and the Quraysh got filthy rich taxing pilgrims visiting the Kaaba. Muhammad was deeply religious and wanted to improve his community. All around him he saw poverty, injustice, war, and widespread discrimination against women and orphans. Muhammad saw the rich abuse the poor, and religious festivals had just become giant Decadent parties dedicated to the worship of idols. This is the best religion ever! <laughs> Woo! Woohoo! Religion party! Instead of attending religious festivals every year, Muhammad would just go and pray alone in a cave. Then, in 610 CE, in the month of Ramadan, during one of these lonely cave prayers, Muhammad, now 40 years old, was visited by Gabriel or Jibril in Arabic. Jibril told Muhammad that there was one God and that he was now God's messenger. Muhammad received revelations directly from God and then recited them aloud. His companions wrote these revelations down and they became the Quran, Islam's holy book. Muhammad's words were radical in tribal Arabia. Once again, amazing, Muhammad off by himself in a cave, probably an aesthetic practice or something like that. Who knows how long he was gone or in there. Did he say how long? Kind of, I'm, might have missed that. I thought that, that he was 40. Yeah, he said that he was 40, but I don't know how. I'm curious to know how long he was spending time in isolation because this becomes a thing in many spiritual traditions. Going off into the wilderness yeah. and then having some type of a mystical experience and then turning it into something. You're right. Jesus went away for 40 days. Uh, mm-hmm. Moses on the mountain. Buddha went away yep. and lived in ascetic life. Yeah, there's like a going away and then having a religious uh, awakening experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once again, I, you know what? It actually makes me think about uh, people that get put into solitary confinement. I'm wondering if they ever like have a religious experience. I bet you they do. I bet you they have. I bet you they do have religious experience, and they probably like a lot of people. Depending on where they are in the world, end up like converting to a religion like apparently andrew tate is now muslim because of his time in prison he was muslim before that wasn't he he was already i think he was christian before that and then spending time in prison i guess he had a quran or whatever and you know probably had some a long time to think in there Hmm. you know he was saying stuff like arab has no superiority over non-arab white has no superiority over black he also demanded an end to the practice of killing infant girls because boys were preferred, saying that girls were equal blessings from God. This didn't exactly go down well in tribal, sexist, and hierarchical Mecca. This whole one God business annoyed the Quraysh because they made money charging people to visit Kaaba to worship hundreds of gods. The poor slaves and others flocked to Muhammad. The Quraysh, now furious and losing money, abused the Muslims especially the vulnerable ones like slaves, who were frequently tortured if they converted. But the Muslims didn't fight back. Muhammad and his god outlawed violence. The Quran said, whoever kills a person, it shall be as if he killed all mankind. After a decade of this persecution, the Muslims fled to the city of Medina. This move in 622 CE marks year one on the Islamic calendar. Right now, January 2021 CE is 1442 on the Muslim calendar. 
Even in Medina, the Quraysh kept attacking the Muslims. So God told Muhammad Muslims could fight back. But God laid down some ground rules for the fighting. Do not target public places. Do not destroy farms or herds. Do not harm women, children, the elderly or disabled. Do not harm animals, trees or plants. And be kind to prisoners and do not forcefully convert anyone. These strict rules of war were laid down to stop civilians getting hurt. Muhammad said, if someone shows no compassion, God will show no compassion to them. By 630, Muhammad marched on Mecca with an army of 10,000. The city submitted without a battle. Muhammad went straight to the Kaaba and destroyed the hundreds of idols and dedicated it only to God. Just two years later, most of Arabia had converted to Islam and was united under Muhammad. Then, on June 8, 632 CE, Muhammad died. Abu Bakr, Muhammad's father-in-law, was elected as the first caliph or successor. This election is the cause of the divide between Islam's two major branches, Sunni and Shia. To oversimplify a bit, Sunni believe Abu Bakr was rightly elected. Shia believe Muhammad chose his son-in-law Ali as his successor. Today, Sunni make up between 80 to 90% of all Muslims, while Shia make up about 13%. Over the next 1,400 years, Islam has spread through empires and trade across the Middle East, Africa, Central and South Asia, and China. It spread to Europe, especially the Balkans and Spain, and merchants brought it to Southeast Asia, and slaves brought it with them to the Americas. And that's a very brief version of Muhammad's story. But what exactly was- Check out that temple. Yeah, love the, the architecture on the inside of that thing, man. Woo. Very, very uh, like balanced and symmetrical. Yeah, I was going to say like all, all the shapes and everything, precision. Yeah. Was this new religion that he was preaching. Islam might seem complicated at first, but we can break it down into some very easy to understand core beliefs. One, belief in one God. Muslims, Christians, and Jews worship the same God. Muslims just call that God Allah because that's the Arabic word for God. Arab Christians also refer to God as Allah. Muslims believe God is the uncreated, all-knowing, all-powerful, merciful, loving, and genderless creator of the universe. Islam accepts that there is only one God and that believing in other gods or worshipping anything else, be it idols, money, or power, like it's God, is a great sin. Islam in general also has no priests, as Muslims are supposed to have a direct, personal connection with God. God created the world in six days. After creating the world and everything in it, God created Adam and Eve, together from the same clay. The Quran states that God created humanity from a single soul. 2. Belief in the Divine Books and Prophets Muhammad said he wasn't preaching anything new. He said Islam was the original religion of humanity. He was just a prophet tasked with reminding people of the one God and bringing them back to the correct path. Muhammad is also not the only prophet in Islam. The prophets of Judaism and Christianity are accepted by Muslims too. Dozens of prophets are named in the Quran alongside Muhammad, like Abraham, Moses, Noah, and Jesus. Moses, Jesus, and Jesus' mother, Mary, get a lot of mention in the Quran. In Islam, Muhammad and all the prophets are just humans, but they carry a message, and all prophets brought the same message, a call for peace, a return to worshipping only God, and a warning of the Day of Judgment. Muslims also recognize the Jewish Torah and the Christian Gospel. The only thing there about the prophets, though, is that you can correct me in the comments if you're wrong, but or if I'm wrong about this, but I think Muhammad is the last. So he, I think what he says trumps everything else. So it, I think it, the line ends there. There's, and I don't think there's supposed to be any other prophets. But again, you could correct me if you're wrong. I think he's the last. So, as divine books sent down by God. So Muslims refer to themselves, along with Jews, Christians, and some other peoples, as people of the book. The big difference between them, though, is that Muslims believe that Muhammad is the final prophet and that the Quran is the last divine book. 3. Belief in the Day of Judgment God created the universe with an expiration date. At one point in the future, the Day of Judgment will come. The world will end, and everyone that has ever lived will be physically resurrected and their actions in life will be judged and they will be held accountable for how they behave. After the resurrection, everyone will move across a bridge that goes over the fire of hell and leads to the entrance to heaven. For those whose good deeds outweigh their bad, the bridge is flat and broad and the crossing easy. For sinners though, the bridge becomes as sharp as a razor and they fall into hell. Hell is a place of fire. Everyone is tortured, miserable, thirsty. Baby shark plays all day long. It's, 
It's off. <laughs> Stuff like murder, theft, and cheating will get you sent there. Whereas heaven is a beautiful garden filled with rivers of milk and honey where everyone is young, healthy, reunited with family, and subscribe to educational YouTube channels. Eventually, most people who go to hell will move up into heaven because God wants people to be in heaven. Now that's a little bit of a difference. Heck I, yeah. You can, you, can, you can get out of hell? That's good. Yeah. I yeah. like that. Yeah, no, I like the idea of being able to, to, to get out of hell. But again, I, I would always have a problem. My contention will always be with anyone who has to spend eternity in in a place like that i just i i draw my line at that i don't think anyone should have to spend a, a, a an eternity but then you get a little bit of a like a theological question here so say someone was like well i can do what i want in this lifetime because i can get out of hell if 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 i want to you know and i don't know how you get i don't know how you get into that process of getting out of hell i don't think anyone wants to go to hell but right yeah so there might be a little bit of a uh I knew a, issue there. I know a wise Christian, somebody I deem a wise Christian, it was because in the Christian Bible, it's like hell's forever, right? But he, yeah. he, this guy has been a Christian a long time. And you can't get out. Yeah, but he's a Christian. He's been a long, Christian for a long time, wise, dedicated Christian. And he was even saying that he, he was struggling with the idea of that. And he was like, well, there's all this talk of fire. And every so many other parts of the Bible that talk about fire, it's always meant as like a purification thing. Like it'll burn the impurities out and he's like yeah maybe the idea is that you got to burn all everything about you that would deserve to burn would go to hell and burn for eternity but what but whatever's pure would is, would not be there you know what i mean just That's an you would get sent to out. hell and that part would burn up into nothingness kind of like a cleansing process or something yeah like and there is something you know i just thought that was interesting you know but that's that's a different faith. That's a different thing. I like I like as you said in there. It's put right in there because it's we're talking about a, a God that is associated with love, right? And mercy. He they even had to update the thing to say that you could kill because they were being killed. You know, <laughs> originally it didn't even say that from yeah. what this guy's yeah, saying. To, yeah, to defend themselves or whatever like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was another, uh, another aspect of that, that I want to think, well, oh yeah, like I listened to all of the Quran on audiobook and there is a ton in the Quran, like a big portion of the Quran is about warning you about judgment day, like a big portion. Like it's, all, it's all throughout it constantly. But, uh, anyway, I guess mm. we'll keep going. Four, the Quran. The Quran is the holy book of Islam. The word Quran simply means to recite or to say out loud. Muslims consider the Quran to be the direct word of God spoken through the mouth of Muhammad in Arabic. The Quran is about 600 pages long and is divided into 114 surahs or chapters. Each surah is divided into numbered verses or ayat. So you can find any quote from the Quran using the number of surah and ayat. Let's just pick a random number, 3119, which is Lo, the harshest of all voices is the voice of the ass. The Quran has no narrative structure. It's organized by length. The longest verses are at the beginning and the shortest verses are at the end. So the topic and narrative of the Quran jumps around a lot. One reason for this is because the Quran is supposed to be read aloud. Many Muslims even memorize the whole Quran. The Hadith are the second most important literature in Islam after the Quran. The Hadith are the sayings or actions of Muhammad, not God, that his Gorgeous, gorgeous looking. Yeah, I, I always love the text. Look, look at the, the the books are always. The, I love the the books. They look cool. Looks great. Yeah. His companions heard and wrote down. Hadith fill in information that's not in the Quran on how to be a good Muslim. The Hadith were passed down orally before being written down. So not all Hadith are created equal. They're ranked from strong down to weak, depending on how trustworthy. The chain of transmitters from Muhammad is. For example, the hadith that reports that Muhammad said, forgive him who wrongs you, is considered strong because the chain of transmitters is trustworthy. Whereas the hadith that talks about 72 virgins in heaven is fairly weak and so most Muslims don't believe it. Sunni and Shia Muslims use different hadith and some Muslims don't follow the hadith at all. Five, the five pillars of Islam. This core belief is split into five, well, pillars. These act as the blueprint for how Muslims behave. First you have the Shahada. The Shahada is simply a statement. There is no God but God, and Muhammad is the messenger of God. This is the shortest 
possible explanation of what Muslims believe. Saying it just once, honestly, makes a person a Muslim. Salat. Salat means prayer, and practicing Muslims pray five times a day. Before Salat, Muslims must perform wudu, or ritual washing of the face, arms, head, and feet. Each Salat begins with the saying, God is most great, or Allahu Akbar, followed by prayers in Arabic, along with movements like standing, bowing, and kneeling. Seriously, Muslim prayer looks like a proper workout. Because a Muslim stops whatever they're doing to pray five times a day, they're reminded of God and the values of the Quran. And when praying, Muslims face Mecca. The direction towards Mecca is called the Qibla. Muslim places of worship, mosques, are planned so that one wall... The Kantra Muhammad. Yeah. Their architecture is beautiful. Yeah. What was that thing that they were... Fa there was a symbol on the wall in the direction that they were praying. That, that looked like a, a, a scripture. That, that thing on over right. the door right yeah yeah that i think that was the first pillar that he said they write that down or something but it's and but it's something you can see and look at they, were they facing it ah uh, yeah well they're i don't know i he's saying right now i think what he's explaining right now is that they do something when they're praying okay forgive me for interrupting yeah but i think i know where you're going at that could that become something that is an idol that's what right? i'm saying yeah that's what like i'm not saying that yeah what i'm saying be. is this is my thought as an outsider. That's my thoughts. Like, okay, you're not supposed to, you know. And by the way, I di I didn't know that there were s s sects of it that did allow drawing of Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting too. I didn't know that. Yeah, that some do, some don't, right? And by the way, even if it does boil down to, you know, the ones that do, they're still saved, and the one or whatever the terminology is, going to heaven. Yeah. Um, and the ones that don't are, but you know, it's. Even if it is, look, you're not supposed to do that because it can be a distraction, you know, just because even they are bowing in the direction of this image or they, they do look to these images and it it's part of their thing. Yeah. It's still a good idea not to worship an image for its own reason. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean, I'm not, sorry, I'm not, don't no, mean to ramble. Wall, just Kibla thinking. wall always faces Mecca. Even the though mosques wall. look different, depending on where they are in the world, they all have. They Kibla look cool, wall. man. Zakat. Oh, yeah. Zakat is a charitable tax on wealth that all Muslims should pay annually. The basic rate is about 2.5% of your current wealth. The Quran says, give money cheerfully to the relatives, the orphans, the needy, the traveling alien, the beggars. 2.5%? You guys got off good compared to the Christian faith where they want they want 10%. <laughs> I wonder if there's another faith that wants more. We want 50%. And to free the slaves. I'm assuming traveling alien probably means something different in that context than how I'm imagining it. Or does it? Today, every year, somewhere between 200 billion and 1 trillion dollars is given to charity by Muslims across the globe through wow. Zakat. Muhammad preached that accumulating wow. wealth was greedy. To stop the rich profiting off of poverty, the Quran outlaws interest-bearing loans known as usury or riba. Money can never be traded for money. Muslim wealth can only come from actual labor or fair trade. Swam. Swam is fasting. During the holy month of Ramadan, Muslims fast from dawn to sunset. Fasting includes no eating, no drinking, and no smoking. Pregnant women, the sick, and the disabled do not have to fast if it puts stress on their bodies. And women on their period can also delay their fast. Through fasting, a person experiences how the poor suffer on a daily basis. And fasting breaks up life's regular routine and invites introspection and meditation on God. Ramadan ends with the Feast of Eid. During this holiday, Muslims give extra zakat to the poor, share food, visit their mosque, and eat with friends and family. Good, great, man. Everyone could do with a little fasting, man. Fasting has like been proven time and time and again to be good. So, you know, I think that's good. Imagine a whole month of it. A whole month of fasting every single year. You know, probably shed off all those pounds. You know, I think it's good. Hajj. Hajj is the pilgrimage to the Kaaba at Mecca, the holiest place in Islam. Every Muslim must make the pilgrimage once in their life, if able to do so. For over 1,000 years, Muslims from all over the world have flocked to Mecca. On Hajj, there is no distinction between rich Whoa. and poor or nationality Wild. and race. Today, more than 2 million people make Hajj every year. And those are the five pillars of Islam.
I got one question. Let me know in the comment. I want to know, are, do you have to be Muslim to go to that thing? Or it, like, could you look from the outside if you weren't a Muslim? Are you allowed to like go see that? That looks like that awesome to see. Imagine what aliens would think looking down and seeing that. <laughs> like, if, you know what I mean? There's all this talk of aliens. What? Wonder if they like hover down. They're like, what the heck? Is, <laughs> what are the ants doing? Uh, uh, humans, we do uh, interesting things, man. Next, let's look at some topics you've probably heard a lot about when it comes to Islam. Women. Islam and women is a pretty topical issue. So how does Islam address women and what exactly is the deal with the veil? Well, first of all, this is a hijab, this is a niqab, this is a chador, and this is a burqa. The hijab is by far the most popular veil you'll see. The burqa and niqab are only found in deeply conservative communities or Afghanistan, and the chador is mostly found in Iran. Not all Muslim women wear veils, and some Muslim-majority nations have actually banned headscarves, while in other Muslim-majority nations, women are pressured to wear them. It's a controversial issue within Islam itself. But why do some Muslim women wear these veils? One reason is culture. The veil is part of many people's cultural identity. Another reason is that Islam preaches modesty. Muslims should be modest in their words, actions, tempers, desires, appetite, everything really. Men and women are instructed to wear loose-fitting clothing that should cover most of the body. There isn't the difference made in the Quran between how men and women should dress and it never states that women need to cover their faces. Veils in general seem to have entered early Muslim culture from their Roman neighbours. The only reference in the Quran to women covering their faces is about Muhammad's wives, and most Muslims consider those verses to only apply to Muhammad's wives. Throughout the Quran, God repeatedly attacks those that say women are inferior to men and repeatedly demands that women be treated equally. Muhammad even pushed for women's education, saying, if a daughter is born to a person and he brings her up, gives her a good education, trains her in the arts of life, I shall myself stand between him and hellfire. The Quran also guarantees a woman's right to work, divorce and own property. Halal. Halal is simply the Arabic word for permissible. If something's halal, that means Muslims can do it without worrying it's a sin. Most foods are halal except for pork, donkey, predators like lions, wolves, cats and dogs, birds with talons, eels, lizards, mice, rats and monkeys. Uh, blood. Blood is also banned. Don't drink blood. Alcohol is also not halal because alcohol has negative effects on health and society. Although, funnily enough, alcohol is an Arabic word. In order for meat to be halal, the animal must not suffer. Its neck must be cut quickly at the throat while saying God's name, to give it a quick and painless death. The animal should not be able to see or hear or smell the previous slaughter, and it must not see the blade beforehand. So right there, that is remarkable. The amount of consideration for the animal. Yeah. Like, okay, there's going to be people that are, whatever, very on the other side of this. And I would listen to their side too, but I'm setting that aside for now. Yeah. To in incorporate that into the religious texts, these procedures for humanely dealing with animals. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pro not, yeah, yeah. I'm pro not making animals have to suffer. Well, you know, the, and, and no, I like the fact that notice how it said that they clean out the room to make it so when they bring the animal in, it doesn't know that it's coming into a slaughterhouse room, which is pretty interesting. That's amazing. Yeah. Like, That's really A plus and shows a lot of uh, 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 consciousness, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's good. So that it doesn't become afraid. Animal cruelty is outlawed in the Quran. Muhammad said, a good deed done to an animal is as meritous as a good deed done to a human being, while an act oh. of cruelty to an animal is as bad as an act of cruelty to a human being. Sharia law. Shakira law. Whenever, wherever Muslims get together, talk of Shakira law will be near, and that's a that's a big deal, my dear. <laughs> Didn't really think it's a bit true. Didn't think about singing it. Sharia law is talked about everywhere these days. The three times it's mentioned in the Quran, Sharia normally refers to the capital W way. The way a Muslim should live to most please God, to bring order to society and to get into heaven. The literal meaning of Sharia is path to a waterhole, which to a desert people was literally a path to life. Thinking of Sharia as only law tends to cause confusion. Sharia mostly covers personal matters and contracts between people, how to pray, fast, how to treat neighbors, not lying, how to marry and divorce, this stuff is the main focus of Sharia. And how to pray isn't something that's enforced 
by law. The Quran in general doesn't have much law in it, but Muslim societies wanted to have laws influenced by Sharia. So looking at the message of the Quran, Muslim scholars decided the goals of legal Sharia were the protection of life, property, family, faith and intellect. Over the centuries, scholars made claims about the Sharia and then backed up those claims using the Quran, the Hadith and reasoning. The body of legal rulings that came from their interpretation of the Sharia was yes. Islamic law or fiqh in Arabic. But fiqh is the result of human opinions and so can be wrong and is changeable. Fiqh can try to capture the Sharia but probably never will. So fiqh evolved constantly. Sharia is aspirational. It was never written down in a big ancient book of unchanging rules. Different Muslims around the world and at different times have different interpretations of what Sharia is and made fiqh based on those interpretations. You might see Saudi Arabia, Daesh or Boko Haram cry Sharia as they abuse and torture people. But most Muslims do not consider what those groups do as Sharia in any way. Most Muslims would consider violence to be anti-Sharia. But headlines focus on those groups anyway. Sharia can and has been used to champion justice and equality. For example, Musawa is an organization which uses Sharia to promote gender equality. That's the fascinating thing about Sharia. It's an argument, a process, a way to learn, grow and adapt. So those are the basics of Islam. It isn't even close to covering everything. I probably only cover about 1%. One video simply can't cover everything. Religions are too diverse, too deep, and mean too many different things to different people. All right, Islam Explained. That was a good video. I learned some some new things. Cog Cogito? Yeah. yeah. Great, great channel for explaining Yeah, go stuff. check out Cogito, man. They got great, great content there. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add to this? Not Anything really. There stood out. Th there was a lot in there. There was a lot, and I th I learned some new things, and I feel like that's something you could watch a few times if you're really interested in learning about this religion that um, many notable people have been a part of and is is going strong in the mm -hmm. world. I found uh, the Sharia thing interesting. I bet you there's a like. It sounds like that is like the unsettled spot within the religion. It's probably like how. In like sex and denominations, they battle over certain interpretations of scripture. It seems like in Shur Shurlia, there's some battles. There's some things that people think should be there or shouldn't be there. But that's in let us day. let us know. You yeah. know, add some stuff in the comments. I know we get a lot of comments. Uh, we're trying to be a little more respectful because sometimes sometimes people get agitated at stuff like this. I am not as of now converted into Islam. <laughs> I would say I'm kind of like a practitioner of all. I think there's a little bit of truth in everything. Yeah, that's kind of I'm the same boat. I think there's valuable pieces of uh, wisdom inside of the scriptures that we can extract without necessarily having to convert. And I know I obviously I know that some people think that you know it's the only way you have to do that so you know everyone's entitled to that belief system. yeah i'm pro everyone getting a say yeah I, I, you know so hopefully you guys like this video if you did don't forget to hit the like subscribe share with a friend and everybody until next time stay, stay spiritual, spiritual.